state of Texas is not particularly known for strawberries. In fact, there's only about 150 acres of strawberries uh, throughout Texas. We do have a lot of small farmers that grow strawberries on one or two acres. And the most, uh, uh, most that growers will grow is about 15 acres. In particular, West Texas is, is just not an area that is known for any strawberry production. In fact, over the past four years, uh, we've had very little production. However, as a result of the uh, National uh, Strawberry Sustainability Initiative uh, and the Walmart Foundation, we're able to show growers throughout our part of the state that yes, indeed, we can, we can grow strawberries, particularly in high tunnel structures. Um, we were invited to be collaborators from uh, Prairie View a and for the project, Strawberry Project. And um, because we were organic, uh, beyond organic farmers, and um, they wanted to do an uh, alternative other than the regular conventional, see if it really worked, and to see how uh, small farmers can use their acreage to make sure that they can do productive work as well as for make a, a streams of income for their farm. We're here at the beautiful San Antonio Botanical Garden. Uh, this is the Children's Vegetable Garden program in the backside of the Botanical Garden here in San Antonio. And we have a part of the Texas Strawberry Project with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. And we're looking at eight varieties in the trial, uh, both on plastic and traditional um, uh, regular hay that the home gardener uses on raised beds. So we're evaluating these uh, strawberries, see how they perform. We have those eight varieties replicated inside the high tunnel and outside. So we're just trying to see how a high tunnel production system may work here in the lower Rio Grande Valley of Texas. High tunnels are, I feel, a really necessary part of our program now. We have actually tried growing strawberries in our area outside before without the covering and had almost no success. The winds just kill the plants because they buffet us in the winter and in the spring and they just basically were tearing our plants up and we weren't getting a good crop and the tunnels completely I can close out all the wind I can protect them keep them from freezing get them in the ground a lot earlier so that I'm harvesting at a time when we get very little fruit at our food bank obviously you know if we were to go to Lubbock Texas in the winter time we know that it's pretty cold there. So the whole project was really to look at this high tunnel production system across the state. Uh, there I could certainly, certainly see that there's advantages to protecting their strawberries versus them being outside. Here we were curious to see you know, what we would see and we are seeing uh, a slight yield increase in the high tunnels. We are seeing a little bit higher bricks in the high tunnels. I think we've been happy with it. We haven't, haven't lost the plastic and We've had days that had, what, 60 miles an hour winds, and it's still here, so we're pretty happy. We did have a tornado go by in July before we got it up, and it probably would have torn it up if we'd had it up then, but uh, uh, it's, it's held up well for what it's gone through, I think. Right, one of the reasons that we do have high tunnels is because we like to protect our plants from the wind. Here you can actually see one variety that was damaged by the wind because these tunnel doors were open, these side vents were open when a big gust of wind came through. You can see some of the leaves are shredded, some of the stems are broken, and that will just reduce our yields. With a hoop house and being inside, uh, we've got drip irrigation in it. And I feel like that uh, if you're ever gonna raise strawberries, this is the way to do it. Soil preparation is very important, especially in a high tunnel, because the, uh, if the plastic remains on top of the high tunnel or covers the high tunnel for the entire season, you don't get any natural rainfall. So you will have to go in and prepare the soil by first uh, flooding the area with water and then uh, using a, a tractor or a rototiller to prepare the soil. The, uh, the best way to prepare a bed is you need to have loose, friable soil. That way, that it'll, when you come in and make the, uh, shape the beds, they'll be a lot easier to form. Strawberries we grow as an annual or eighth month season and we start putting transplants out or bare root plants out uh, traditionally in the month of September and October. We overwinter them uh, so we try to put all the energy in establishing a plant, a uh, very uh, good crown, a good root system. So from planting to about the end of December we, we encourage home gardeners to pinch flowers and the, and the first runners 
and then uh, we start really accelerating them in late winter going into springtime through water and fertility. So uh, we start bringing our first harvest in typically from late March through the first part of May. So traditionally one plant should yield a potential of about one pint of high quality uh, fruit. Pretty good success. I had some problems with the strawberries. Uh, some fungus, uh, uh, spider mites, very few, but uh, that was basically it. I had some cold weather come through that destroyed a lot of the strawberries. Interesting things that we've learned from this project is that uh, certain varieties will respond differently to high pH. Here, this variety on the right, we can see symptoms of intervenal chlorosis, where we have, uh, this will pro most likely interfere with our overall yields, whereas the variety on the left, you don't see that. The leaves are perfectly green, nice and healthy, and it's uh, more tolerant to our higher pH that we have here in this part of uh, West Texas. Well, uh, we've had uh, some obstacles, such as uh, varmints, but overall, I think that I'm very pleased with the results and the yields that we're getting both outside and inside the high tunnel. I, in order to collaborate with the strawberry project, I'm hoping that we're able to get a very high production rate of a lot of strawberries and a lot of weight and an extended growing period to where I can provide them for at least four to five months every year. Well, we're happy with the quality. Uh, now the volume, we, we think we can do better and hopefully we can learn and how to, how to uh, increase the, the volume of our deal. But I'm, we're very happy with the, with the taste and the, and the quality of them. But definitely we could see that the berries in the tunnel did develop a lot earlier than they did in the field. So we were able to harvest uh, through the winter months in the high tunnel and even in the perforated low tunnel uh, versus not being able to harvest uh, quite so many that was not covered or blanketed uh, in the field. The, uh, we held approximately nine field days across the state of Texas during the course of the year, during the course of this project. Uh, each of the field days was held in the south, in the east, and also in North Texas. Overall, our field days were very successful. We had anywhere between 15 and 85 participants. These field days included uh, small acreage growers, as well as those from the industry, and consumers as well. Our indications uh, from these field days is that local consumers would prefer locally grown strawberries over those that they purchase in the markets. And so here we had two field days. Uh, the one in uh, December was more uh, producer oriented, uh, where we made educational program. Texas A&M came and did um, the pathology lab, came and discussed some plant diseases. We had uh, Thomas Haar from Earthwise Organics came and um, uh, gave some advice and some uh, insight on organic uh, fertilizers, pesticides, and uh, some of those things. And then Joe Masabni did some uh, educational um, in the field um, tips on growing uh, strawberries uh, in general. And uh, we enjoyed his field day. We went out there the first time and uh, we saw where he had half hoop and, and it was pretty good with that. I, I would like, I'd like to see later on uh, what he did on um, that particular. I didn't get to go to the second one when he had the uh, field day and the uh, open market because we were at Prairie View doing a, another market. <laughs> and we, I, we went to their field day to see how their strawberries were working in their field. Yeah. But we're encompassing more of the urban, homeowner, and youth aspect of it. If we can uh, increase uh, families to grow more vegetables and fruit at home, particularly uh, with the strawberry project, that's all benefits because it all adds on to the ability of consuming more fresh fruits and vegetables and on all the benefits that gardening has in bringing the family together. So it's all good and positive. So I would say that would be a part of what we're contributing as well. The difference between store-bought and our strawberries, uh, the strawberries we grow are, have more uh, sweeter flavor, uh, juicier, and uh, I think we just enjoy them a whole lot more than the store-bought strawberries. Now high tunnels are uh, framed, they're similar to greenhouse, they're, they are frames that cover soils and uh, we, are, we are able to protect our plants from the wind 
damaging hail, and also extend the season. So what we have learned as a result of this project is that we can grow great tasting strawberries even in Texas.